What's up, guys? In this episode of Helpful Dreams, we're going to be diving into the thoughts of Jim Rohn in his book, Leading an Inspired Life. And we've prepared a shortened version that we're going to go ahead and read through in order to download it straight into our minds so that we can use it to aid us on our journey to success. And so we're going to dive into that right now. I hope you guys enjoy. Discipline is the connector piece between thought and accomplishment. All good things are located upstream from us. The passing of time can take us adrift, and drifting aimlessly can oftentimes lead us to negativity, disappointment, and failure. The danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. But add up these days to make a lifetime, and it will easily turn your life into a major disaster. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Everything in nature strives to become all it can possibly be. That surging feeling and self-worth that comes from starting a new discipline is almost as good as the feeling that comes from the accomplishment the discipline brings. It doesn't really matter how smart you are if you don't use your knowledge. Use discipline in applying your knowledge. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic and elusive. Procrastination is almost the exact opposite of discipline. Discipline then says, do it now to the best of your ability. An immediate reward for lack of discipline is a fun day at the beach. A future reward of discipline is owning the beach. Life will give you some pretty big challenges, but unless you practice on the small ones and master those, you don't have a chance on the major ones. A man strides out of his house to go straighten out the corporation and has not yet straightened out his garage. Who is he kidding? So work on all the disciplines, small as well as large, that will improve the quality of your life. You can't change people, they can change themselves, but you can't change them. If you want motivated people, you have to find them, not motivate them. Imagine dropping to the floor right now and doing as many push-ups as you possibly can. And let's say for some reason you haven't been doing any push-ups lately, so the best you can do is five. But is five all you can ever do? No. If you rest a little, you can do five more. And if you rest a little more, you can do five more. How do we get from five to fifteen? It's a miracle. If you continue that pattern, is it possible to get up to 50 push-ups? Of course. How do you go from 5 to 50? It's a miracle. It begins with one simple step, doing what you can do. Once you have done that, you can keep working to bring your best to the higher level. Each time you complete an activity and take a rest, you're preparing yourself for even greater accomplishment. But don't rest too long. Think of more ways and means to use your own wisdom, your own philosophy. Children require discipline. They must have a structure built for them. They must have boundaries to work within so they feel secure and comfortable to explore and grow. They must learn to recognize what's right and what's wrong, what's acceptable behavior and what's not acceptable. Children require constant and consistent discipline, otherwise they'll be confused as to how they're supposed to behave. For every disciplined effort, there are multiple rewards. Learn the discipline of paying attention or paying your taxes. Learn the discipline of learning all you can learn, of teaching all you can teach, and reading all you can read. A lack of discipline in the small areas of life can cost you heavily in the more important areas of life. You cannot inspire others to sell more when that goal is inconsistent with your own conduct. Nobody would mind paying the price if they could have a clear view of the future. Do two things to help your kids. Help them see the promise and help them pay the price. We intend to take action when the idea strikes us. We intend to do something when the emotion is high, but if we don't translate that intention into action fairly soon, the urgency starts to diminish. The time to act when the idea is hot and the emotion is strong. Increase your motivation by quickly setting up the disciplines. If you will change yourself, everything else will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. Don't wish it were easier. Wish that you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems. Wish for more skills. It's amazing how hardworking and intelligent people have all the luck. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Doing less than what you can messes with the mind the most. It causes all kinds of psychic damage. Go where the expectations are so strong that they provoke you and push you. Long-term goals are the equivalent of a major journey. When you reach the point where you've achieved your long-term goals, your life will be fundamentally changed and the process of getting to that point will have transformed you into stronger, wiser, and a high-performing person. The reason for setting goals is not what you obtain. 
It's what you become along the way. Don't set your goals too low. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow that way. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure is to perform and to grow. Ambitious people see everything they do and every discipline they adhere to as a link in the chain of events and actions that will lead them to their final destination. When you can see that every link in the chain will eventually lead you to the things you want most out of life and to the person you want to become, then you won't grow discouraged, fearful, or impatient with today. Don't begin the activities of your day until you know exactly what you plan to accomplish. Don't start your day until you have it planned. Don't start your week until you have it planned. What's in it for me can take you only so far. What's in it for somebody besides me can take you as far as you need to go. The best money spent is the money spent to cultivate the genius of your own mind and spirit. Don't invest more for frivolous comforts and conveniences than you do on your own education. Don't be casual in getting it. Casualness leads to casualties. Wherever you are, be there. Be there to absorb it. Take a picture if you can. Take pictures in your mind. Let your soul and heart take pictures. Get it, capture it, absorb it. Give in to the emotion. Let the feelings strike you. Take a lot of pictures. Don't be lazy in capturing each event. Reflection means to go back over, to study again, go back over your notes, go back over your thoughts, and go back over your day. Long ago, people worked for nine years, and the tenth year was a sabbatical used for relaxing, replenishing, and getting into shape physically. Aim for a change of pace. Go over the previous nine years to see what went right and what went wrong, what worked well and what didn't work. Gather up today and invest it in tomorrow. Gather up this week and invest it into the next week. Success is one of the best forms of motivation. One person caring for another is life at its best. The road to heaven is heaven. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that shortened version of Leading an Inspired Life by Jim Rohn. We're pulling together these key concepts into a shorter version just to make it easier for people to digest and also easier to implement into our own lives. We're going to be trying to take out most of the fluff and just going straight to the key points and the things that are most important and the best motivational speeches of all time. And so I hope you guys stick around. Subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.